Romans 8 verses 36 to 39. The word of God says, as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm going to share today on victim mentality versus kingly mentality. I read to you earlier Romans 8 and the word of God says that we are more than conquerors. What does to conquer mean? To conquer it means to control, to take control. To conquer means to overcome. To conquer means to subdue. To conquer means to bring that one thing in subjection. Put it under you so that you can control it. To conquer requires force. Because when you talk about conquering, you are talking about some kind of resistance being there. There's some kind of resistance in front of you and you are conquering. You are winning that resistance. You are overpowering whatever it is that is resisting you. You are more than a conqueror. Verse 36 tells us, as it is written for your sake. We are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Psalm 44 verse 22 says, Yet for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's the verse that was quoted by Paul. And that's why Paul said, as it is written. It was written in Psalm 44 verse 22 that we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for slaughter. What it is is like, you know, people raise sheep. You know, they raise sheep, they take good care of the sheep for one reason, to kill that sheep. The only thing that a sheep is good for is to be killed. And this passage of scripture says that the saints in the Old Testament meaning the people of God in the Old Testament, were persecuted. They were killed. They were persecuted for your sake, meaning because of God. Because of their love for God, they were persecuted. Because of their love for God, they were killed. But Paul says the same verse in Romans 8, saying that it's not only the people of the Old Testament, but it's also the people of the New Testament. This includes the people that were living when Paul was writing. He also includes us. You know, the same trouble, the same persecution that happened in the Old Testament, that persecution is happening again today. The church of God is under persecution. The people that believe in God, that want to honor God, those people are under persecution. But what I like in this passage is that Paul is saying, yes, we are being slaughtered. Yes, we are being killed. Yes, we are being persecuted. But there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. What Paul is saying is that you can persecute me. What Paul is saying is that you can insult me. What Paul is saying is that you can walk on me. What Paul is saying is that you can even kill me. But there is nothing that's going to separate me from the love of God. When it comes to the love of God you can do anything you want but my love for God will never cease and the love that God has for me will never cease Paul says that you are you can crush me you can stamp on me you can hurt me you can do anything you want you can reject me but when it comes to the love of God I will not change. When it comes to my walk with God, there is nothing that will separate me from the love of God. And in the same way, I'm not separated from the love of God. In the same way, the love of God is not removed from me. The love that God has for me does not change either. You may insult me, but God still loves me. You 
you may crush me, but God still loves me. You may do whatever you want to me, but God still loves me. Paul says, do not worry about everything that is happening around you because nothing will separate you from the love of God. The people in the Old Testament were not separated from the love of God. The people in the New Testament in the time of Paul were not separated from the love of God. And I refuse to be separated from the love of God. Nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Now we see the cruelty. These people were very cruel. You know, as we're talking about slaughter. Slaughter is not just killing one person. It's like killing, 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 killing. It's butchering a lot of people. You know, they are cruel. They want to, to, to force people to stop loving God. Hallelujah. Paul says, in spite of their cruelty, nothing will separate us from the love of God. And so he says that their cruelty does not change the fact that God loves us. And the fact that you are persecuted, don't let the devil lie to you. The fact that you are persecuted does not mean that God doesn't care about you. Whatever you do, do never curse God. No matter what you do, don't you ever curse God. Don't think that, oh, because I'm persecuted, because I'm going through this and that, God doesn't care about me. The devil is a liar. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. So the word of God says, in these things, verse 37, in these things, in the persecution, in these things, in the trouble, in these things, in the resistance, in these things, in the obstacles, in these things, in the poverty, in these things, in the sickness, in these things. He said, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Our victory, that's why I said earlier that God already prepared this, this service today. Our victory is in him. Our victory is in Jesus. He said, yet all in these things, what is it? What problem do you have? Tell me, and I'll tell you in that thing, you are more than conqueror. Through him who loves you. What is the name of your problem? In that thing, you are more than conqueror through him who loves you. What's the name of your persecutor? In that thing, you are more than conqueror through him who loves you. If whatever it is has a name, there's a name that is above every name. If that thing has a name, maybe the only, thing, the, the only way that thing can escape is if that thing cannot be named. <laughs> because if that thing can be named, there's a name that is above every name. And that's the name of Jesus. And in him, we are more than conqueror. I told you what to conquer means. We are dominating. In those things, we are conquerors. Through, not in ourselves, but through him. Through Jesus. And that's why the key is to remain in Jesus no matter what. Did I say, <laughs> where should we go? To whom can we turn? There's nothing out there. Even if you kick us, we're not going anywhere. We are staying right there with you because in you, and he will never kick us. He is always ready to embrace us. He wants us all the time. But it's just a way of saying things that even if he didn't want us, we must stay because there's nowhere else to go. In him, there is life. In him, there is victory. Hallelujah. Victory. Do you think that persecution just comes like that? Do you think that there's a reason why Satan and his people don't sleep? That is because no matter what they bring your way, you're still standing. So they have to stay up to think through some other plans to kick you. But you will remain standing. You will remain standing no matter what. Because you are not to have a victim mentality 
But you need to have a kingly mentality. A mentality of a king. That's what you need to have. Not a victim mentality. That does not mean that you don't recognize or you don't acknowledge what happened to you. Yes, you know. You see it. But it will not keep you down. This is where the difference between the victim mentality and the kingly mentality is. Because the same thing happens to two people. One that has a victim mentality will not go forward. But the one who has a kingly mentality, two years down the road, you will see them and you won't recognize them. Because they understand that they are more than conquerors through him who loves them, through Jesus who loves them. Let me give you an example of victim mentality. Numbers 13 and 25 to 33. The word of God says, And they return from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness to Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land. Of the south, the Hittite, the Jebusite, and the Amorite dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwell by the sea and along the bank of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. We're going to verse 33. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Enoch, came from the giant. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. This is the characteristic of someone who has the victim mentality. So someone who has a victim mentality see themselves small. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. They see themselves small like crickets small in face of giants and they think that people see them like that see that's a problem a lot of time <laughs> the the problem is with us and we think that is with others the word says we are like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight how do you know what's in their sight how do you know how they see you it is because you see yourself small like a grasshopper, like a cricket, you think that everybody sees you small. The problem is yours. It's not people. So if you think that people see you small, maybe you need to change the way you see yourself. The word of God says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Now, keep in mind that it is God who told them to go there. And they are saying, we are not able to go. Did God say that you were going to go in your own strength? You yourself are not able to go. But with God, you are able to go. So this negativity was not to be coming from their mouth. But this is how someone who has a victim mentality acts. They only see themselves and they see themselves small. They see the life challenges bigger than God. 
instead of saying, seeing a big God, they see a small God and a big problem. Verse 32. The word of God says, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land. If you have people around you who have a victim mentality, you're going to be easily contaminated. The word says that they gave the children. Now, they were sent to spy the land and see the land so that people can go there. Now, they come back and they give a bad report. They tell the people how bad that place is where, you know, there are giants there. They themselves look so small. This is the report that they gave the children of Israel. The word of God says, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. How do you want the people now to go there? So by your mentality, you are also causing other people now to disobey the Lord. So you are now not only closing your own future, but you are closing the future of everybody else. Victim mentality is something that we need to get rid of. Look at how they responded. Let's go to Numbers 14, verses 1 to 3. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept all night. Whose fault is this? It's the fault of those who came and gave them the bad report, right? And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Victim mentality. A victim mentality will cause you to have self-pity. A victim mentality will cause you to blame whoever you want to blame. When the problem is really you. A victim mentality will cause you to be bitter. The word of God says, and all the children of Israel complained. Wang, 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 whining. The children of Israel complained against Moses. Moses risked his life. God sent Moses to them. Moses risked his life before Pharaoh. He went and set them free. And he is now carrying them into the promised land, into their destiny. And all they have to do is complain about Moses and about Aaron. Bitterness. Victim mentality. A victim mentality will also cause you to blame God. Why has the Lord brought us to this land? To fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Some people actually say, when I was in the world, I was better. It's the same thing. Egypt is the world. Some people in the body of Christ say, when I was in the world, I was fine. I should have remained there. Well, go back. Hey, somebody's waiting for you. <laughs> Bitterness. <laughs> Blaming God. I'm telling you, even if Jesus said, I say I'm going with you. I'm not letting you go. There's no place else I want to be. There's no place else that is worth being. You want to go back in the world? Go back to your vomit. The devil is there to do better than what he was doing before. <laughs> At least in the Lord, when there are stuff happening, the Lord is there with you. He's keeping you. He's helping you get back up. But without the Lord, 
Some people turn to drugs. Some people turn to alcohol. Some people turn to prostitution. Some people turn to all kinds of stuff because they don't have the Lord. And a lot of times their problem is so smaller than yours. And you are still standing strong because you have Jesus. But someone who has a victim mentality will be blaming God. Why didn't you leave us in Egypt? Did you bring us here to kill us? Like the Lord is just putting you in, in the wilderness and he's not there with you. There's no way. In the midst of the wilderness, he's right there with you. Let me tell you, don't you ever waste your wilderness. Don't ever waste that time of wilderness. Don't waste it. Learn from it. And grow stronger out of it. And shine better. More than ever before. Don't you ever waste that time when you were in the wilderness. Don't. So they went ahead and they complained. This is the victim mentality. Let me tell you that victim mentality is very expensive. <laughs> it's very costly. Till Numbers 14. Let's read verses 20 to 23. The word of God says, Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land for which I swore to their father, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. A victim mentality is very expensive. It's very costly. These children of Israel who had a victim mentality did not make it to the promised land. That's why I said to you, don't waste your wilderness. After you have suffered this long, make sure you enter your destiny. Don't let the enemy remove you from the path so that you can miss your destiny. Let's go to Romans 3, verse 19. You see, it's tragic when your wilderness is useless. It's like you suffer for nothing. The word of God says in Romans 3, 19, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the deed of the law, like you yourself wanting to do things, you will not be justified. But if it's through Jesus, then you will be justified. Then you will have victory. If we have this victim mentality, we need to change. How do we change? Well, we need to examine our lives and see what is the pattern of thinking and of behaving. Like what is that thinking that comes up over and over and over and keeps coming back? What is that behavior that keeps coming back over and over and over? These are the things that we must attack. Those things that keep coming back, that are not good, that are not positive, we need to attack them and we need to take the responsibility to work on that ourselves because no one is going to come and do it for us. They blame Moses all they wanted to. They blame God all they wanted to. But who lost? They lost. Had they taken the responsibility to stop murmuring, to stop whining, to stop complaining against Moses and to trust God, to develop that trust because what I read to you earlier in Numbers 14 verses 20 to 23, it talks about how they saw the glory of God, how they saw miracles. Now, if you've seen these miracles, you should develop some kind of faith. When the next tribulation comes, you should be like, huh, I saw God do this before, 
So he's able to do it again. Okay? So I should be able to develop that faith. But if I don't develop it, no one is going to come and do it for me. And so to get out of that uh, victim mentality, the work has to be done by us. 